for a lot of people who are watching, um, I haven't really explained my origin story for quite some time. And I've got a lot of new followers. So I'd just like to share a bit of a potted history for, for Paul Banks. And I'm about to walk through some mud at the same time. So bear with me. You might just be about to see me go up my arse. Uh, where do I start? 20 years ago, I wanted to follow my big brother. He was a software engineer. Studied at Newcastle. He's 18 years older than me. He was a mature student. And I idolized him. And I wanted to be just like him. So I set out, went to do software engineering. And I was advised at college to take maths and maths, maths and science and physics. Turns out I didn't need any of that. Not all of it. And I put myself through hell at ear levels because I was trying to do things that just weren't me. And turns out I'm ADHD. I didn't know that at the time. I'm ADHD. So I really struggled with all those abstract concepts. Unless I can visualize it, I really struggled with it. So I struggled through. I got a 2-1 in my degree. Really proud of that because... I don't know how I ever got through. I was, I was drunk most of the time or figuring out how to put pirate games on all the uh, computer labs. Sorry, Teesside Uni. I was that guy. Yeah. They came in one day and I, I'd, uh, I copied 30 copies of um, Command and Conquer and distributed it to the students in the room and we'd all installed it on the machines at the same time. We'll play the game again after they'd only formatted the computers the night before. Sorry. Yeah, that was me. Um, I'm a rebel. Can't help it. Uh, university and... I was married not long afterwards. I was married at 19. I got divorced at 21. I got engaged after nine days. And I got engaged and told someone, and they went, oh, you can't do that. And bad thing to say to somebody with ADHD. So I did it anyway, more to spite them than anything else. Turns out it was a big mistake. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. Hey, ho, you travel the path, you become the person you're meant to be. It was a horrible experience, luckily. I came away with no sort of major impact. I'm not going to go into the story. I came away with some baggage, let's put it that way. I came away with some mental baggage. And working in call center at NPower when I was a young kid, I loved that environment. Eight o'clock in the morning, I was the one standing at my desk being really annoying, really energetic, drinking an energy drink, going for his break at half eight, quarter to nine in the morning because nobody else would, and eating a frozen curry. <laughs> you know I'm that kind of guy. If you know me, you know I'm that kind of guy. And somehow, Sam, who's my wife, fell in love with that no idea why or how but she did and she, that's also the reason why i didn't continue working in the call center because me and her can't work together it's horrendous she likes everything done completely by the book and my adhd didn't like me doing things by the book um i like to make my own rules especially if it makes more sense than the rules i left and i joined discount retail um try to sell kitchens in the middle i was rubbish at it because i can't lie and i was having to go into people's houses with a with a mock-up kitchen I was driving around in my Peugeot 206 with uh, diesel, one litre diesel Peugeot 206, but looked like a boy racer car because I had all the speakers in it and the decals on the outside. Those were the days. Tipping up to people's houses and wondering why they weren't buying kitchens from me. <laughs> it was a cowboy outfit and they just wanted me to lie and make all, all sorts of stuff. And I can't do that. I need to be honest with people. <laughs> so yeah, went into discount retail and spent the next 15 years there doing pretty much every role in the business. The two, you know, I did everything from logistics and admin to KPIs, analysis, running stores. And the two bits that I spent the most time in were, to be honest, running stores and um, loss prevention, which is looking at customer theft, internal theft and fraud and security procedures. And I love that because that plays right into my, into my niche. Um, if there's a way of breaking the rules, I can imagine it. I can understand how somebody would do something. And I, at the finish, I understood people which is the other side of things. I'm curious about why people do the things they do because it's never logical. So I stepped into that and I was amazingly successful. Did really well at it. I also made a lot of enemies over the way because I got rid of a lot of people who were, who were stealing from the business. And why just, that for me was a formative role because I could start to see strategy beyond my role that I was doing. And I stepped up into like a national trainer position for that as well. I really enjoyed that role. Anyway, long. Long story short, 15 years, and the role that I really wanted was a learning and development role. They were like, they were like hen's teeth, those jobs, and, and I, the one came up. And as it came up, I'd waited for about five years for the role to come up. I knew it was coming. And um, a lady joined the company who was the former head of training and learning and development for, I think it was Nando's, UK. I had, and I had no experience, really, other than running stores. 
So I lost out and it really, really killed me, to be honest. A friend of mine got out into transition, didn't run another career. She was um, supply chain head of for the re region and she got out into a recruitment position. She's, she's doing executive search positions now and she's amazingly good at what she does. I love it a bit to Melanie. If you're watching this, thank you so much for all your advice over the years. And she advised me to start networking. Get on LinkedIn, she said. Get on LinkedIn, start networking. You'll get headhunted. That's where you want to be. And kind of corporate skepticism stepped in. I was like, oh, I don't even know what networking is. I'm working 16 hour days. I'm working five, six days a week. I ain't got time for any of that. But I endeavored over the next three years to do more of it. I wasn't always successful. And it was still more of a news feed for the 150 connections that I had to stay in touch with each other. Um, but the day came when somebody asked if they could have a chat with me. Um, they'd, they'd read my profile on LinkedIn, they wanted to have a chat, and I had no reason to say no. So I'm in store on the phone, talking to this guy from Manchester who was trying to convince me to come and be a consultant for an AI startup based in Manchester, oh. selling conversation analytics. I had no idea what that was, um, but I really liked the sound of it. And he was a good storyteller. I liked him. Uh, and turns out I can tell stories quite well as well. So that's probably why it resonated. I joined. Um, that was the modular of analytics company. I joined them and I was with Jimmy, Sam and the guys for three wonderful years. And I owe so much to those guys. I learned so much from that business. I absolutely leveled up my understanding of the business world. I didn't even know what B2B was at that point. I had to have it explained. Hello, son. I have it explained. So the learning curve was steep. But what they wanted me to do was to sell to C-suite. Now, I'm, I'm coming from a role where I was scared to talk to head of sales, right? They were, they were way above my peer grade. And I'm all of a sudden being asked to talk to CEOs and chief operating officers and CFOs. And do you know what I found was once we got in front of them, that was the easy part. I actually really enjoyed that part. And if I treat them with deference, so respect, but deference, right? Like they're not better than me just because they've got a different job title. They are just different roles, just different job titles, different set of experience, different point in their career. So I did that, but I realized that we need to get more conversations with the right people and cold outreach wasn't really the way to do that. So I set about doing it through creating relationships because I realized that was the most important thing to everyone there, creating relationships. And that was really hard to do without being salesy. So I did it through video content. I started to record a podcast with our CEO. He was really forwards on those sorts of things. We set some time aside each week to record on a Monday, throw in shade, it's called. Jimmy, Jimmy Horsang, Paul Banks. It's kind of now a bit defunct because neither of us could really find the time to continue on after a while, which is a shame. We might go back to it one day. Jimmy, if you're watching, love you, mate. We will come back to it. Uh, but then also AI would agree on a Thursday, which was me interviewing industry leaders. And that was useful because one, I got to upskill my own experience and learnings, um, understand opinions and thoughts in the industry, but also to open connections and open doors to those people as well as leveraging their creativity on LinkedIn. I could just chop up the video and put it out there. But putting out one video per week for each of those was just not enough. Still only posting twice a week. I was responsible for four accounts. The content was all samey. And this is the origin of Javelin is I realized how to efficiently and effectively create micro moments from that content using technology plus my own experience and my, under, my underpinning contextual understanding of the conversation. And we were creating two, 300 clips in various formats, color schemes, formats, you know, layouts and stuff each week. Um, that rapidly filled our social media queue. And fast forward to the November before I left to join, start my own business, we were being approached at conferences and people want to come and ask where I was. That's where we started Javelin. And I realized that guys, I can go and do this for lots and lots of other people. And that's, that's where my passion is. It's not, it wasn't the rest of the business. It wasn't the cold call inside of things. It wasn't cold emails. It was creating connections with people. That's what I value. And that's the people I work with tend to be the same is people who understand how to connect with other people. They work one-to-one, -one, they have relationships with people that really mean things. And I live in service of others. That's, that's part of driving force. My why is to help people make better decisions. So I hope this has been interesting for you all. There's a whole other 10 years in there. Ah.
in amongst all of that. Hello, son. There's a whole other 10 years in there amongst all of that where I worked as a volunteer police officer for 10 years. Well, in, in and around holding down a full-time job. I hope you now understand who I am, a little bit about me. And uh, don't be afraid to drop me a DM and have a chat. Looking forward to it.